Hello, and welcome to Mist World, a post-apocalyptic world that is covered in a permanent and deadly mist. Survivors cling to remote villages and towns at the summit of mountains, connected by a fleet of powerful and fast Oracle-class airships. These airships, however, are starting to disappear one by one mid-flight. All signs point to a deadly and powerful adversary, and one that must be destroyed before all is lost. Mist World is the creation of Dan Machuka and is played using the Tiny Dungeon TTRPG system. Now, settle in and enjoy the show. Hi, my name's Dan. I'm the storyteller. And I'm Danielle. I'm playing Astrakhan Zell, a gnomish golemancer and artificer. I would be playing... I'm Lachlan and uh, playing Henry Goodbarrel, the Burgermeister Apprentice, uh, Halfling. Uh, I'm Connor. I'm playing uh, Mr. Whitbeer, the uh, Goblin uh, General Purpose of Ships Rigger type guy. <laughs> old uh, man. Old man. Uh, hi, I'm Kirsty. I am playing Neely Druitt, the pilot of the ship at times and former Sky Hunter. Excellent. Now, we, you guys are currently uh, on board your ship. You're docked at a village called Thundercleft Village. It's so named because there's a rock formation close by and it looks like it's been struck by lightning. Uh, the Far below, you see the ocean of mist. It looks pretty calm at the moment, but it's just got this pink and white tinge to it that the old timers say reminds them of the ocean. Uh, it's a small village. The Really the only notable features is the large keep, oversized keep that the lady of the town manages. Uh, it's your last day here, so you guys are getting ready to go. One, I'll just get you guys to introduce your character, tell us your traits and whereabouts you would be as that happens. So Astrakhan, you can go first. All right. Um, so in terms of traits, just the trait name or descriptions as well? As descriptions as well. All right. So I'm an alchemist, which means mm -hmm. I can mix potions, elixirs, and poisons, and I'm good at identifying unknown liquids. I'm also spell-touched. That's what the artificer comes from. I can create little magical effects just by kind of wishing. And I am a golemancer. I am followed around by a very loyal, beautiful, and not at all creepy spider golem, which is powered by a glowing gemstone set in its chest. Um, I love my golem more than anything else in the world, and it goes everywhere with me. At Excellent. the moment, I don't have any tasks aboard the Hope and Grace, so I'm probably sitting on the rail just watching and making sure that there isn't anything last minute that needs to be done packing wise. Excellent. And yes, that is the name of your giant airship that you guys control. It is known as the Hope and Grace. Uh, Henry Goodbarrel, whereabouts are you at the moment? I think Henry would be uh, in his chambers currently. Uh, Henry is playing the, well, attempting to be more of the defending role. Uh, so he comes from a family of burgomeisters or mayors of the town, used to uh, collect um, all the taxes and make sure everything was handled appropriately. Uh, and his brother, Dimitri, was uh, left home and became a world-famous hero and uh, the shining jewel in the family crown. Uh, Henry was not so much that and was, you know, the... Uh, weak little brother who was like, okay, I'm not great at anything. So he uh, set out to prove that he could be something. Um, he's got the halfling trait of a heroic heart, so I don't have disadvantage when my friends are nearby. Um, he is a pretty good cook and can heal people for when they eat his meals. Um, and he's got the traits of a uh, defender, where I can uh, protect someone near me, uh, the shield bearer where... I get uh, to roll an extra d6 when defending with a shield. Opportunist, I can take an attack when someone else uh, uh, makes an attack against me. And so, uh, mm. yeah, he's uh, he's currently laid out all his items uh, across his bed and recounting to make sure everything's in place so he doesn't screw this up again. Um, and I think that he's realized that he must have lo lost one sock in the laundry and has kind of 
left everything out and is running down the corridors trying to get back to the laundry, you know, area to find this missing sock. Excellent. And uh, Mr. Whitbear, whereabouts are you at the moment? Well, he's, he's obviously on top, on top of the airship. Uh, there's lots to do before we, before we, uh, we, we head off. So um, getting everything prepared to for the for the ship to sort of take off there. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Whitbear is just a general sort of all-purpose marksman when he's uh, when he's not required for for whatever duties are uh, on the ship. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, he uses his sort of small size to to get through all the different corridors of of, of the ship and everything required for maintenance. That's where the goblins work best, along with the halflings. So, excellent. Uh, that's where he's going to be. And finally, finally, Neely Durrett, where that's you at the moment. Uh, uh, Neely Druitt, uh, formerly from a family of like aerial hunters, is um, I have fleet of foot when in a vehicle, so I can fly this goddamn airship and anything else that I'm driving faster with, with advantage, technically. Um, I also have survivalist and tracker, so I'm good at finding our way around in the air and tracking any beast or person that we need to track. And like Astrakhan, I'm spell-touched. So I have, you know, just a trace of magic in my blood and I'm able to maybe just move the occasional thing or do the occasional small illusion. Um, I'm at home on the deck of a ship, not in one of those, you know, God's forsaken towns. So I'm here on the ship as always. I would go to the town, make my inquiries and then be out and back on the deck, making sure everything is ship shape. Excellent. Um, so you guys are all close by the ship. There's an odd bit of tension to the air. Um, most, most of you guys are involved in the cargo would know that you, you guys have taken on a lot of cargo and maximum number of passengers for this particular trip. Normally there's, you know, normally it's a sitting about 75%, but if anything, you're overflowing. Uh, when you look outside and you see people, there seems to be people who are just a bit more desperate to get on the ship. There's just a bit more, um, of a few more people asking about tickets and getting turned uh, to leave and getting turned away. And uh, it's just adding up to this kind of odd little energy around the town. Uh, as you guys are going about your business, though, you start you hear what in the background sounds like gunfire, uh, bl- blunderbusses type thing coming through, but it sounds like it's coming closer. Uh, what do you guys want to do? So we hear this just gunfire on the wind, or like in the distance, and this is we can probably associate. This is why all the people are trying to run into the ship. Well, it's coming from the center of town. It's just started. So that pressure was, or, was already kind of there. And then you started hearing this, this blunderbuss, but it sounds like it's coming closer. Excellent. Um, yeah. So uh, I think he's, uh, yeah, Henry's there and he's, you know, hugging his sock as he's making his way back to his room and he, you know, starts hearing the gunshot. Oh, oh my, what do I do? What do I do? Um, okay. Okay. Breathe, breathe. <sighs> And then um, he's going to try and make it to the bridge and be like, can I be of assistance? Um, mm-hmm. So he'll make his way there. Yeah, no worries. So with this game, you have two actions. So if you use both your actions just to, to leg it. Yeah, um, yeah. You that'll, make the that'll be his go-to. So I'll uh, yeah, start heading his way to the bridge. Yep. As you get there, everyone seems to be looking out the windows towards the city. Some of them are, po- are pointing. And from your viewpoint, you can see that they seem to be pointing at, at some kind of carriage off in the distance. Um, okay. Uh, I'll leave my actions there then, <laughs> uh, Mister Whitbeer. You, you're up on top. What are you What are you doing with this? Yeah, um, being, being up on top, um, I want to um, take out any you know like binoculars or um, what I've got, and uh, confer with the other other crew around us to see if we can we can spot to see what what's um, what's causing all the gunfire. If it's going to be a danger to the ship here, you know, you, yeah, we, excellent. We don't want to. Okay. I'll get you to roll 2d6 then to see what you can see yep. from from your position. Uh, I only got a 2 and a 3. 2 and a 3. That's right. It, there's, a bit, there's a commotion in, in between uh, you and it. So you're not, it, you see people seemingly running out of the way, dodging out of the way, but you can't get a beat on what it is exactly that's heading towards you. But it is for sure heading towards the ship. Okay. Well, uh... There's obviously something occurring, so we'll, we'll send down down notice to the bridge that, like, hey, you know, there's 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 gunfire in the in the city here, and we, we can't see what's going on. No worries. 
Uh, as you do that, they, they, they confirm, yep, we're going to start sending people out to the front of the ship, to the bridge, and see what's happening from there. Um, Neely, what, what are you doing? You've, you've heard this order, you've heard this confirmation. You've yeah, seen I've got the... little patience, a little tolerance for these town dwellers. So I'm just going to grab the person nearest to me, shake them a little bit and intimidatingly say, what's going on? Why do so many of you want to get on here and what's with that gunfire? <laughs> All right. So you, you say that, they say, well, surely you've heard that it's it's been three months since one of the Oracle class airships has come to this town. It, it looks like we, we've lost a third one over the mist and people are, are starting to get nervous about being so far out. Um, that's, that, it seems like people are starting to, uh, to want to leave these smaller areas. And what's with the gunfire? I've got no idea. Can you no. see what's going on? You no. can have a go at TD6 if you want to, to, to see if you can spot it. Yeah. Um... Excuse me, sounds of rolling in the background. Uh, yeah, a five and a three. It's a five is a success, right? But yep, so you need to roll a five or a six on either yeah. of your e sixes to succeed. Yeah. So you you come up and um and you look up a little bit from where uh, Mr. Whitbear was looking earlier, and what you spot looks like some kind of armored uh uh wagon. It looks like it's it's the, it's some kind of steam powered. It's it's heading towards you guys, and it looks like somebody's kind of crudely cut holes out of the armor and a, and a pointing guns out and it's heading straight towards your ship. All right. I'm going to turn and run for the tiller. Mm -hmm. Where are you heading to? Um, the wheel, the wheelhouse. Yeah. And Astrogan, so you, you've, people have, have had a chance to see this wagon. You, you've now kind of, now that you've been told where it is, you start, <laughs> you can see it. All right. Um, I, I keep some questionable substances in my cabin. They're all perfectly safe when they're mm -hmm. stored correctly. If not stored correctly, they explode. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go and very quickly grab a couple of those things that I could mix together, say, and toss through a crudely carved window in a, an armored carriage should I need to do so and make sure that I have them to hand ready to go. Um, do the people in front of the ship look like they're scattering or they're just waiting? So it looks like the people between the ship are all kind of turning and seeing what's coming. It's still like a, a good couple of rounds before it'll reach the ship, but certainly mm -hmm. people are starting like, oh, what's going on over there? And starting to like get, a, get away from it and move away. Okay. So if you want, you can roll a, an alchemist roll. So if you, that's with advantage to try and mix something up that's a bit explosive, if that's what you're wanting to do. Yeah, I think that that's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. So with advantage means I get three dice. You roll 3d6, that's correct. Yeah. Just trying to remember all the different systems. That's all right. Uh, mm, four. So that's not four. really, that's, that's not ready to explode yet. That's right. You can take it. You can take a second action to try again. Yeah, I think I shall do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe with a different three dice. <laughs> Clearly cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly cursed. It's the dice's fault always. Well, I got a five that time, so you know, mm -hmm. could be. Excellent. So you're kind of like in a corner, going, uh, you know, I have new bit of bit of stardust, blah blah blah, and it kind of fizzles like crap. All right, and you, you start putting it together again for a second time, and this time not enough newts. Fast. More newts. <laughs> Maximize the newts. Send newts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't want to go in that direction, uh, Henry. But yes. Uh, <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so you've got you've got a, a kind of a tossable bomb in a flask ready to go. Excellent. So it inches forward, uh, Henry. So you can now identify that there's this uh, ship. This um, not ship, but a uh, uh, wagon cartwheeling to greening towards you guys. Nice. Um, now, jumping back, for our listening audience and myself, uh, what is our expectation of this ship? Like, uh, what's the general feel for our character? Some of us have jobs and yeah. others don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're all, you're, so you're all hired by the ship directly to look, up, yep. um, to look after it in some way. Uh, basically, it's your home, um, this ship. So it's, it's, it, it's, not just your uh, home, but your main defense as well. 
And so if you see this danger getting towards the ship, it would be fairly reasonable that you'd uh, collectively would work together to try and defend it. Nice. Um, yeah, so stepping up onto the bridge, still holding his sock, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Henry kind of uh, comes up and salutes and... Uh, um, Excuse me, Captain. Uh, can I? Um, can I? May I be of assistance? Yeah. Um, so, Captain Plumner is this human, big bushy beard. He's kind of dyed it pink and purple to cover up the grey. He refuses to admit that there's anything other than that, that. There's any kind of white in there. He kind of points at you and says, "You get down. You get down there on the rope ladder and uh, and make sure you don't. What you stop whatever's coming towards us." Right. I can do that. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do I do I need my shield or should I just just try and do it now? Um, so he salutes he, again. He basically tosses you the lid of a rubbish bin and says, "That'll do ya." Got it. Um, and so he'll make his way to that rope ladder and start mm-hmm. climbing down as quickly as his tiny legs will take him. No worries. So, so you're kind of in position, not like between, basically between the ship and this thing. There's a few people yep. kind of joining you and making a little shield wall. Yep. So it's not just you, nice. uh, Mister Whitbear. Um, I'm just going to um, wait until there's, there's, you know, orders come up. Um, still going to stay on, you know, the posting is, is obviously on, on top of the ship here. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where I'm going to stay um, on watch with the other people um, up here. Um, so the order people. comes through to to attack it, to try and stop it. It looks like this thing's coming to attack the ship. Okay, cool. Um, what armaments do we actually have on the ship? Like so, well, for you, so for yourself, you'd have your crossbow kind of on you or at all times, kind of this little hand crossbow close by. But if you want to slide down, there are these um, uh, like small cannon that can be attached to the railings as a defense. They're, about, they're basically handheld, but they're, um, they're designed more to uh, scare away large creatures than anything else. All right. Well, um, that, 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 that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, Rope down one of the. Uh, I'll get together some of the other other gobo boys here. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll scurry down one of the lines. Um, you know, uh, head out to the equipment lockers. You know, pushing the passengers away and stuff like that. Get out yeah. um, one of those cannons and set them up. No worries. They're, ba- they're basically like uh, in case of emergency, spread along the ship. So you just you you hop down one side, you grab one, and you can just easily clamp it to the side and be ready to take your shot next round. Cool. Uh, Neely, what are you doing? Yeah, having realised that no one else has my quick presence of mind and is ready to get the heck out of here, I've done mm-hmm. a very rapid U-turn back from my path towards the helm and mm-hmm. I've turned back towards the direction of the approaching armoured car. Yeah. Um, what's the range on it? How close is it? So it'll get it, it'll be on top of Lockie in the next round. In top, on top of Henry Goodbear on the ground. Like at this point. Hot damn. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what Hopefully, just like for me? just on top of him, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just making it Keeps going. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, say, I'd say it's about 60 feet away. Okay. So, is it in range for me to try a spell? Sure. Give it a go. Okay. So, I'm going to try shooting a bolt of ice at the front wheels. To see if mm-hmm. I can sort of freeze them and hold the progression. All right, roll uh, 2d6. Uh, five and a four. Nice. So you managed to, so you uh, basically call down this, this uh, bolt of ice. You strike the you strike the front wheel. It wobbles and it, and it and the it starts wobbling a little bit. Doesn't look like it's the it looks like the wheels might be a bit of a weak point that you found there uh, compared to the more heavily armored body of the thing. Okay. Strike um, the wheels, I shout. Did, you've still got a second action if you want to do that again. Yeah, I'll do it again. Um, mm-hmm. Same ice and maybe aim for the bit that I saw was the wobbliest. Go for it. Um, ah, six and a one. Nice. So you, you managed to strike the, again, strike the wheel again. The wheel kind of, um, again, it's, it's bent now, so there's like a definite hobble to this wagon, but it's de- it's still oncoming. Um, Astrakhan. Right. Well, the wheels are weak and Mm -hmm. the carriage is slowed down. So I'm going to hop down from where I am, uh, dash towards the the carriage, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to use my magic to 
try to pull the, um, the either the spokes or if there's a bolt or screw or something in the wheels that connects them to the carriage, just mm-hmm. disconnect that completely. Like that's what my magic does. It's all machinery. So I'm going to attempt to disconnect that bit of machinery so that it crashes and hopefully burns. I like it. Go for it. Roll 2d6. All right. No. Uh, no, that is not a success. It's currently wobbling all over the place and I can't get quite a read on where to disconnect it. Mm. That's all right. Yeah, you, you, you're kind of trying, you're just able, able to get that focus with it wibbling and wobbling in and out. Yeah. All right. As it comes closer, it's going to it's gonna take a pot shot at our dear friend, Henry Goodbarrel at the front. Awesome. <laughs> You'll be fine. It, they're <laughs> terrible shots, I'm sure. Texas. They are, in fact, terrible shots. So <laughs> you... So this, so this little musket sticks out the front, shoots, and this this kick of dust comes up all over you. Lucky, nice. Uh, 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 everyone else, can I use my opportunist ability at that point in time? If, do you have a ranged attack? I could throw my shield, Captain America style. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not. It will Got not it. work that way. I could throw my sock at them. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll allow you to throw the sock to see if it connects, but I can <laughs> will, limited effect. <laughs> miss, missing on it, whether you're, you're not you hit or not, the effect will be the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he wants to hold on to his sock. It's what it's the only reason he wasn't ready with his weapons. Uh, so yeah, he'll uh, you know we'll just watch a bullet just fly past his head, and then ice bullet ice beams come over his head. He's freaking out. It's good. <laughs> Um, on that note as well, a few of the other defenders attack as well. Uh, a couple of them strike a striker, but they all seem to be bouncing off that main body. Nobody, se- nobody seems to manage to hit the the wheel as well as you, as Tracan and Neely have tried. Uh, Henry, you're up again. Nice. Um, all right, Henry. Uh, what's steering this uh, cart? Do we have an idea? So you can see. It basically looks like almost like a turtle shell. So it's this big, round, heavy metal ca- encasing it, and it, mm. but there's been like crudely cut holes. And as you look through, you can see a couple of small faces uh, looking outside. You presume that they're controlling it from inside it. Excellent. Um, all right. So what I'd like to do, is, is it possible to, like the, these crudely cut holes, mm-hmm. how, how wide are they? They're basically like arrow slits, so they kind of, they, they've tried to defend themselves as much as they can. Nice. Um, is it possible to try and leap onto this cart as it comes past me? Yeah. So what you could do is you could take – you've got two actions. So one of them could be yep. the evasion action to make sure that it doesn't run you – to help make sure it doesn't run you over. Okay. And then you can ready your second action to either attack or, or leap up and, and move on top. Yep. Let's do that. Um, he's sitting there. He's like, okay, what would Dimitri do? What would Dimitri do? And then, uh, you know, braces himself to, uh, leap onto this cart, sock in hand, shield in the other. So awesome. evade and then get ready to leap. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Whitbear, you have, it's your turn. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to fire, um, the cannon that we've got, um, yeah. Uh, so because this isn't uh, your master uh, weapon, you only roll two d six for that. But yeah, see yeah. how you go. I uh, got a four and a two. Um, Full shot. That's not great. Quick shot. I can uh, reload it and fire it again. Why not? Go for it again. A uh, six and a four. Damn. Nice. So you, so it's more, um, it's more shot. Like it's not a, a cannonball so much as a, as a, as a grape shot that you're launching. Um, so you, you putter it out, uh, again, you hit this ping, 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 ping as it hits the armor, but, um, but this time you also take on the other wheel and it's, it's almost starting to lean to one side as, uh, as these wheels are taking so much damage. Uh, Neely drew it. You're up. Yeah, so are they on the ship at this point? Are they? They're they're just in front of the ship. So the next turn, uh, they're going to make contact with Henry Goodbarrel and, and his line of shield defenders. 
Yeah, and and there's like a gangplank in between us. That's right. Them. They're heading straight for the gangplank. What's the structure and material of the gangplank? Heavy heavy metal and wood. Uh, basically, it's designed to carry carts. Okay, yeah. All right. I'm going to shoot another ice bolt at the wheels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed that time. Yeah. And yeah. as hit this time for a second Excellent. action. So, so again, you kind of launch this ice bolt. This one goes flying overhead and uh, this like little hailstorm lands behind, but the second one manages to hit uh, directly in the center. And you can see that the um, axle is just holding on. Astrakhan, now's your chance to finish it off. Excellent. I should be close enough because I dashed forward last time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to toss my bomb in through one of those gun ports or windows or whatever they are. Go for it. Cool. Right. And I get a five. Nice. So you uh, managed to kind of do a little commander roll and uh, get that flask inside one of those ports. Um, you hear this kind of muffled <laughs> And uh, and then the cre- the the thing stops and kind of collapses on one side. Um, out come crawling three goblins, and they kind of they kind of got wounds, shrapnel sh- wounds from your attack, and they're all kind of like, please, please, we surrender, we we give up, and kind of reaching out towards Henry Goodbarrel and the other defenders. I'm going to collect their slight guns slight just just in case. Yep. So there they, they were two guns that they had. So you managed, you managed to grab both of them. They were these kind of muskets. Excellent. No more shooting at us. Yep. And, and Henry, what were you doing? Uh, yeah. As these things crawled out, he let out a small shriek. Like, oh, uh, yeah, you will take those guns. And then puts his hands on his hips and tries to look bravely. Um, now you don't do that again. Got, got him. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he'll just try and make sure that there's no other goblin. He'll go over one of the arrow slits and peer in um, mm-hmm. to make sure that there's no other goblins in there that could potentially uh, jump out and kill me. Yeah. So you look inside. It only seems to be this, these three. There was one driving and the two shooting. Um, as you kind of look around, the other two, a couple of the other defenders go grab some, uh, some manacles and start uh, handcuffing these guys um i think at, at that point uh after you know these these guys are getting arrested up he'll he'll look over at uh astrakhan and uh uh now have we have we been working together for a while is that the the concept here yeah basically. Yeah. yeah so um he'll he'll come up right over to astrakhan well uh that that, that was mighty impressive <laughs> i uh how, how did you get through the whole hell hole it was there was so small. Yeah, it, it's I'm used to putting big things in small things to make machinery work or stop. It, it's how it goes. You also very impressive, Henry. Very good. That was that was great defending. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I <laughs> didn't do much. And he kind of you know <laughs> rubs the back of his neck uh, and yeah, uh, kind of kicks away the uh, the trash lid that he was holding. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I was definitely prepared, and then. St- Realizes he's still holding his sock and stuffs it into his pocket. Um, we we should probably uh, get back to Neely. She, she, I think she'll want to leave after seeing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> time's money. And then you know, starts running off, hoofing it like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm before I follow Henry. I'm gonna ask some of the the bystanders who seem to all be sort of in a shocked inertia, still standing watching us. Mm-hmm. Um, if they know these goblins, like who they are, why they might have had an armored carriage in the first place, doesn't seem like the usual kind of vehicle for a town this small. Uh, one of them, one of the, one of the townspeople, kind of goes up to you and says, "Yeah, they they arrived about six months ago, and they were apparently they're only planning on staying here for a short time. But they've uh, when they kept them not being able to get a ticket off." They went and lived outside of town, and we hadn't seen them for a while. I, I had no idea that they were that they were building this thing. I guess they were uh, deciding that if they couldn't get a ticket off off out of town, that they would force their way onto the ship. Hmm. 
Tricky. Are there any more of them or is it just those three? I think they had a cousin, like, but he was only a te- he was only a teenager. He was only little, so he got, it was possible they left them at home. All right. Thanks. Thanks for the information. Good to know. Not at I'm, all. Thank you. I'm going to make sure that I tell um, Neely and Henry that there might be another goblin out there and to watch out. All right. So if you like, you can give me a quick notice check at two d six to see if you can spot anyone. All right. Nope. nope. I'm too distracted by the, the cart itself. And there's a bit of smoke and destruction happening as well as it gets, I guess it gets removed. Nope. Um, as you guys are uh, starting to get ready to go, you see the captains, uh, Captain Plumner, he's come down um, pretty sheep. He said, look, we can't just go just yet. I've just gotten a notice from the lady of the tech village that she needs to speak with me. I'll, uh, I'll be back shortly um if you guys could just keep keep an eye on things down here and uh and make sure everyone's loaded and we'll, and we'll go within the hour and he stomps off um yeah henry upon hearing that will salute him and go back to his room mm-hmm. um and this goes to the back of his door and he's like it goes to the mirror and just looks at himself he's like a trash lid you had a trash lid stupid stupid you never see Dimitri with a trash lid, and then he goes out and you know pulls a sock out of his pocket, lines it out perfectly on the bed next to the other one. He's like, "All right, counts it all up and starts packing his suitcase." Mm-hmm. Stupid, and uh, he'll come out and then uh, I think he'll uh, yeah try and um, find Neely, see if she needs anything of use. All right, so Neely, you're you're back on the bridge, I assume. What are you doing? Yeah, I actually think that at this point, like sensing a vacuum of leadership or, or a sensing that very few people want to leave as rapidly as I do, I would probably actually be down near the gangplank trying to hasten um, the loading of the final passengers, any other cargo and equipment, um, just so we can get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also there I'm positioned to kind of hold off any further attacks. It feels pretty unsafe at this point. Um, I did notice a sock on the deck, actually, which I I assume that I, I picked up and put in my pocket. Uh, it, just because it feels like Henry Goodbarrels a type, does it have the embroidered initials oh, absolutely. on it? Absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's a very HG. elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the G's got so many swirls. <laughs> and it smells like, it smells like very nice laundry detergent, actually. <laughs> yeah. He probably never wears the socks either. They're purely for show. <laughs> it's like he's never sweated in his life. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, as you are, you know, picking up this sock, he uh, comes up behind you and is like, "Hey, uh, you nearly ready to go?" <laughs> I, I'm sorry about that. Um, so that's not the first time you've made that joke. No, I think he <laughs> I makes it every time joke. he yeah. sees it. So uh, nearly uh, uh, tolerates it because you do seem a good sort. Um, she pulls out the musket and just empties into his head. No, but she no. does shove the sock in your mouth. Um, uh, Pour it on. Turns away without saying anything. <laughs> um, and he's like, oh, I, um, I didn't realise I'd... Where's the other one to this pair? <laughs> so he, um, he pockets it. <laughs> Maybe there's another HG around here somewhere. Um, and then, he, uh, but in, in you know, all serious, uh, do you need anything to be of use, nearly? Sheepishly um, looking down. What's the situation, Dan? Does it look like we're nearly loaded or? Yeah, so basically, you guys normally would be lifting off in the next five to 10. Uh, yeah. Basically, as this commotion was happening, the, the captain's gotten this notice that he needs to speak to uh, to the to the lead of the town. But um, but did he he'll take be back anyone with him? No, he just seemed to have gone by himself. Okay, so I would be like, how long does it take to retract to retract the gangplank? Um, usually pretty quickly. So that that's usually the last thing to happen. But if you're wanting to just kind of have it. Retra- retracted and be in, then that can be your call to make as the uh, as the pilot. Yeah, I would probably just retract it for now, but I'm I'm going to keep a nervous eye out for signs of anything even slightly wrong, and I'll maybe just have a look up at Mister Whitber. At this point, we've worked together for so many years; he can practically 
we can read each other's body language and I'll sort of look up at him and motion my head towards where the captain went. So hopefully if he's back up in the rigging, he'll be able to get a better sense of if anything's going wrong in the town. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, up in the, up in the rigging, as soon as the, the captain sort of left the ship, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, half of everyone who's up here is just watching him with, with, with binoculars. No worries. So yeah, you, as you go through, you don't see, uh, there doesn't seem to be any kind of concern. There's a few people again who are just kind of like the ship's still here. Surely I can just get on, but um, but they're getting turned away. Nobody seems to be having any the kind of the similar reaction to what the goblins seem to have in it. It's kind of accepting that they can't get on and, and leaving. Um, after about forty minutes, the captain comes on. Uh, as you guys see him, he's kind of grumbling to himself. He calls out to his leadership <laughs> team, which we, you guys have kind of taken on as role-playing for yourselves as well. So that includes uh, Ethan Hawke, the first mate, uh, Kekweb, a, a giant spider who's also in charge of ops, <laughs> Shauna, a elf, and... I'm missing one off my list. Alistair McFlandry. Alistair uh, McFlandry. Master you're of passengers. Start. That's right, Master of Passengers. So he, call, he calls you. He calls those characters in to his office. Uh, he wants to get some. He wants to get something uh, for you guys before you guys take off. So kind of okay. you, you lose your your normal NPCs and grab these ones temporarily. Bab yeah. um, drops down into like the office on like a on a thing of silk and skitters across the, like the. <laughs> the ceiling above the, uh, the 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 central table. Excellent. It's basically a poker table. So there's been a few times when you guys have played poker over this table. Um, the captain kind of reaches into his desk, pulls out uh, almost a traditional bottle of whiskey at this point, uh, takes a slug, and then offers it around. Uh, uh, Ethan will wander in and <laughs> you know, like, captain, <laughs> and wait for. Sh Shauna to be done with the whiskey to take his own turn. Yeah, Shauna positions herself as far away from Key Key Quab. Is that how we say it? Um, yeah. As possible. Like they've worked together for years. <laughs> she knows he's an okay guy, but he's he's a giant spider. So she does like <laughs> still harbor some feelings of fear around him. So just quietly staying quite far away. I feel like it's an instinct thing when it's a giant spider. Yeah, it's fear shapes. You can't help it. Um, Alistair will kind of butt in as uh, Captain Plummet is pouring the drinks. Now, uh, Captain, I have to insist that we talk about this once more. With all these dying passengers wanting to, begging to pull the ship, I'm thinking that if we offer, you know, we could say, take our current passengers, halve their room, we'll put a sheet in between it, we could double the amount of sales of tickets. And now, look, we'll get a couple more complaints, but I think we'll be able to make up for it well in revenue. So uh, what do you say we look at that potential option one more time? Hmm? I understand what you're saying there, but as Kekweb's also told us, if we sink too far down, <laughs> we're at risk of getting of of uh, having the mist blow through the ship and we'd end up with dead passengers rather than extra ones. Yes. Kekweb's just like in a, in a nest of webs and like the webs go throughout the entire ship and that's how they get like reports about whatever's going on. It's like, yes, <laughs> like, you know. Oh, come on, legs. We could support They're almost at, capacity. at least 20 more. Uh, mm. Almost. See, he says almost. We've got room for more passengers. Now, I... Yes, but we don't have room for more food. Well, uh, look, we'll catch something on the way. I mean, there's, there's skyfish, or I'm sure you could boil up a fly stew. Hey, eh? right, legs? <laughs> <laughs> Sean is just shaking a glob of, like, silk at you. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, he kind of steps back as it lands at his feet, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if that's how we feel, I hope you shall enjoy the uh, weaker payload that your Christmas bonus shall receive. Hmm? We're I know we don't have the captain. power, Alistair. Shauna is like, sick of having this argument with Alistair about... Was, was there something you needed, Captain? My bigger, <laughs> my bigger concern is what is taking out our, our, our compatriots in your Oracle-class ships. They, we're now lost four. It's almost a quarter of the ships in total. And that's what's causing this problem is the, the, we've had enough of these ships going around. These, pe these people, they don't get orders of food. They don't get orders of construction material back through to them. 
and they are at risk of starving out. Now, I've reached out to the capital to ask about what's being done about this, and I was told just to keep on doing what I'm doing, to keep on running these these uh, maintenance routes and keeping everyone fed, but I feel like there's more we can do at this point. Now, what I, what I suggest we do is load up a small team of people to see if they can investigate what's going on. I have my theory, and I'd be interested to hear yours as well. And sending them off while in one of our smaller side ships while we complete our next delivery. Now, my theory, and you've heard me say this before, is that there's a, there's a rogue dragon out there. Those are the only things big enough to take out the, a ship like ours and like our compatriots. It's the only thing that could fly for long enough to be able to take that, take somebody out in the, in the mist. But I'm open, as always, I'm open to ideas. Oh, yes, I, I have a potential idea, Captain. You said that they've taken out four of these vessels already. Is that correct? Well, one's missing. Oh, sorry, there are three missing. So as far as we're aware, they've been destroyed. Well, three missing. Swear if you suggest that we need to have extra hazard pay. No, no, nothing price. like that. I was suggesting mm. that we increase our prices, say, tenfold. I mean, with the option that uh, we have so few... Uh, other, you know, we've monopolized the airs essentially. So uh, perhaps we could increase the price of our tickets for passengers or that of delivery of construction. And uh, we all might be seeing that Christmas bonus yet. Hmm? <laughs> he smiles around the room, grinning widely, and uh, yeah, trying to sell I this. Think can I wrap him up in so far? This one looks highly approving. As, as you <laughs> move to do so, Captain Plumber kind of puts his hands on one of his shoulders. And says, he, look, he kind of whispers to you, look, I understand your feeling. However, he's also the reason why we're able to keep this ship in good nick. Let's, um, let's leave him be. And uh, we'll talk about moralities at another time. We, we can do that. But I, can, I can just, I could cover the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and we, can, we, can, look, we can take it off when we, when we need to hear from him. The reason we have enough Never. food is because I budget appropriately. Now, if you I do. can find a way to make it so that the budget can extend to a little more caviar, then so be it. Hmm? Mr. McFloundry. Yes. We have our budget meeting tomorrow, once we're underway. Very well. I shall be quiet until then. No need for silk spitting. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> we don't think that sending out a small boat just means we'll lose the small boat whether it's a rogue dragon or a rock. Well, it's a very that, big net to catch a dragon. Well, that, and that's why we need to choose the, the people that we send out very carefully. I'm with you, Captain. If we lose the Oracle ships, the Oracle class ships, in the end, we're all doomed. If we can't stop this, then civilization as we know it, it's over. That's correct. And my concern is that while we put that smaller ship at risk, we've got a chance at least of finding out what the, what the issue is and being able to do something about it without putting other colonies at risk in the meantime. Now, this might surprise you, but I too concur. And uh, being that we're going to be losing the number of small people plus the weight of a ship, we should have a little more room for capacity, eh, Legs? <laughs> I'm sorry, budget meeting, but we shall keep that in mind. Crab will like I'm with reach you, Captain, back into way. its fur, like <laughs> on its back, and then like pull out like a scroll, and we'll just like unravel across the table with like a list of all the crew names. Yeah, and like with 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 two hands, it's like going through the scroll, and another one just writing down extra names on another piece of paper. <laughs> Now, what I so the first step we'll need for any for, for for one of our side ships is the pilot. Now we've got four on board. Do any of you have suggestions on who it's we should the send? paper with the four names? <laughs> yeah. There's only one who needs the coin enough to be foolhardy enough to give this a go. Nearly. Very well. Oh, yeah, nearly, of course. They've they've done a fine they've done a fine job behind the wheel when when it, when it has been their turn and I trust your judgment in that matter. And she's at home on a small ship. I think she's a good choice. Now the other oh, one decent. as well is 
they'll need somebody who's capable of keeping their ship in good repair should it go down for any reason. Do we have anybody who can spare that from engineering that might be able to help? Engineering. Someone who can do a bit of everything, really. Shauna, mm -hmm. you're on engineering. Yeah, who can you spare right. most easily? Uh, I don't think it's about who I can spare, but it's about who single, which single crew member could keep a ship afloat for as long as it might be needed and be useful with other things. And I think there's only one choice. It's Astrakhan. Well, I agree. Now, um, I happen to see that there was some young halfling waving a trash can lid and uh, at the front of the ship earlier today. Uh, what was be... going on with that trash can lid? I'm not sure, but I think, quite frankly, it's hard to sell the first-class tickets when we have those type of members aboard. Perhaps we could assign him to this expedition as well. I'm sure he'd be honoured. <laughs> well, he certainly seems to be looking at some, for any excuse to make a name for himself. Perfect. So that We're in agreement. We shall send that rat. Uh, I mean, young boy. And I also believe we mean send we have somebody... to uh, refund his ticket. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. We're still getting you. Are... <laughs> and I, would, I, would, I would also suggest we need to somewhat send someone with some seniority to help uh, with some experience uh, in keeping these ships together. To, to, in keeping these ships together. Oh, here's all oh, the yeah. um, the list of the um, maintenance staff that uh, could perhaps. Assist Ashokan Zell. Mm -hmm. like, You're thinking of Mr. Role. Whitby, obviously. Yeah, there's no one else who has the respect of the entire crew the way that Mr. Whisper does. No one except the captain, obviously. Oh, of course. I mean, of the of the uh, of the non commissioned officers or crew. Yes. <laughs> Plus, he doesn't need to dye his beard. Perhaps we could look at that. It's difficult to sell those first class <laughs> tickets when we have. Never. The, ca the captain takes a moment to like fluff his beard and ignore that comment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a separate meeting again, the fashion meeting, Captain. If you'd I, be so kind, I imagine so. So that's our four. Do we are we in agreement? Yes. yes, agreed. We'll miss them, but we can we can sail without them, and they have a good chance on their own. Now the question is, we need to we need to decide where we need to send them as well. I feel like we need to send them to the capital. That's where most of the most learned people are and they would have more information, more rumours than we can get from these outer colonies. Oh, absolutely. Captain, what, where there... did we lose the last airship? Yeah. Did they go check out where we lost the last airship first? That's out to the west, which is why I believe it's one of the dragons. That is where they lay uh, out in that direction. It's just open space there. There's no, and as you can imagine, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be much evidence. It'll all be on planet side where we can't reach. Is there a chance of reprisals if those of the capital have told you specifically to go about business as usual? If we then send a small crew out, they'll have to engage in some subterfuge. Potentially, they they don't they wouldn't need to identify as part of our crew, yeah. but to some concerned citizens looking for information. Well, we're in good agreement. We shall send them to the capital. We shall lose some weight from the ship. He throws a knowing wink over towards uh, legs. And, um, well, and uh, we can re discuss what options we have at the budget meeting tomorrow. Good meeting, everyone. Yes? Do we send some pigeons with them so they can report back? Or do we wait for them to meet up with the main ship for a report? Captain Plumler reaches into his desk and he pulls out this little uh, necklace. And it's one that you guys know is it'll enable some form of communication back and forth. It's not instant, and it, and it sometimes it, there's, it means that there's a delay between reading and being able to respond, but it does allow for communication back and forth from the ship. Excellent. We'll hand that to we'll hand that to the rigger and uh, and allow him to be in charge of communications. Now, yeah. if you don't mind. I've had a long day. I think we could all do some rest before we send them off tomorrow. Um, for now, I'll leave you to it. Absolutely. Will speak to them, Captain. Will you, will you speak with them? I'll draw up the missions in writing so that they're aware of their, so that they have something official. 
and if necessary, can provide proof that they are a member of our crew should they need to pr prove their story. Of course, should have known. You'd have thought of everything. Bob's already been writing, like, with the four of the <laughs> spare hands. <laughs> Like already getting the scrolls prepared. Yeah. So they, there's a, like four scrolls kind of coming out as needing the captain's signature. At the end. Excellent. Like... <laughs> Excellent. Who knew having a giant spider on crew would be so useful? Well, I did. That's why I hired him. <laughs> All right. So he, he, he dismisses you guys. The captain dismisses you guys, kind of offers one last drink before he does so and uh, sees you all out. Yes, uh, yes, quick up. Uh, I'm going to need some details about weight we limits uh, for our next budget meeting tomorrow. If you'd uh, meet me in the uh, engineering area deck, it would be great. Thank you. And he uh, walks out the room, hands behind his back, standing proper. Excellent. <laughs> Bob scurries into a vent. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you hear the skittering sound from throughout the ship. <laughs> It cuts directly to Kayab's face. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> and so we cut back to your original characters, to Mr. Whitbear, to Neely Druitt, to Astra Kamzel, and to Henry Goodbarrel. Um, they're all they're all going to bed and falling asleep. The whole ship is, in fact, falling asleep. Uh, as you guys sleep, you, you start having a dream, not aware that you're all having the same dream. It's mostly red. You can't make much out more out than red. Uh, every now and then there's a flash of blue. It's hard to get much of an impression about it, but it seems like there's some kind of conflict, some kind of fight between the two colors. And then the last, the, the, you hear these words come through. It's not your fault. And then each of you separately wake up and then bit, feeling a bit uh, confused, feeling a bit kind of portentous that there's some doom. You fall back asleep, a bit restless, not as not as well rested as you would have been normally. But by the time morning turns around, you've mostly forgotten that dream, except for those words that it's not your fault. In the morning, it's breakfast time. You guys all turn up at the mess. Uh, you are given your orders to uh, turn up at one of the side ships and be prepared to depart for the capital once you finish packing. Um, yeah, Henry uh, obliges, although he's sad that he can't find this other sock that he forgot that he had. Um, he's like, I honestly thought I packed it, but something inside me telling it's not my fault, so... I think I can manage. <laughs> so weird. I, I had a dream about, I had a dream about that. About my and socks. It, not, well, I don't think so. About it not being your fault. Well, yeah, Something. that's good. It can't be his fault. He doesn't know anything. Well, I mean, I know, I know some things. I'm, uh, I'm, I, uh, I'm pretty good. Name one thing you know. He knows trash can lids. Hey, that was one <laughs> time. Yeah, but you were really good with it. He don't, knows how to don't launder knock the a sock. Yeah, he knows how to launder a good sock and and do embroidery. Hey, hey, that 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 was my grandma made me do that embroidery. And you just cut back to his room, everything's embroidered. <laughs> so <he's> just... <laughs> <laughs> And there's like, and there's, and there's like cross stitching circles yeah. as well, like on a gram on your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> He's got this uh, sign on the wall that's embroidered that says embroidery, sweet embroidery. <laughs> um, when Neely hears Astrakhan mention um, their dream, um, mm -hmm. Neely gives Astrakhan a very strange look and says, "Not his fault." What? And I could have sworn I had a dream like that. You're, um, you're dreaming about my socks as well. This is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it is getting weird. Maybe maybe we heard something. Was somebody having a like a loud conversation outside the cabins or something? No, no. I. It was this morning I was arguing with the laundromat about the sock and I told them it wasn't my fault. <laughs> but uh, that was, you would have all been well awake by then, I think. Um, mm. which... I only remember because in every dream I ever have, it's always my fault. But last night, 
it wasn't. I don't know. That's, kind of cast yeah. dreams. That's um. Yeah, well, you know, I don't depressing. dream. So. <laughs> Do all goblins not dream, or is it just you, Mister Whipper? I'm old to dream. Don't have the imagination anymore. Oh. Oh. That's so terribly what are you sad. Avoid? I mean, that is sad. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I think Neely has negotiated hard. Um for some extra pay, um, yeah. danger pay. Um, of course, pay. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, after like a bit of a weird moment getting all touchy-feely talking about dreams, she's, oh, they're straight back into business. Packing so boat. For that danger pay. Quite one of our straight away, in. just to annoy um, the flounder. That's the budget <laughs> meeting. So for that danger pay, you're each given 25 gold. Um, you don't really, you can't really spend it on the ship, but once you get to the capital, uh, you will be able to spend up as much as you want. Uh, just to be clear about what the name of the capital is, it's called the Bastion of Gossian. Uh It's a very, it basically, it's, it's almost like the Coruscant of this area. It's nothing but city, almost straight down to the mist. Very uh, fifth elementy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they must need a lot of food runs. Indeed, they do. Um, Henry pulls How? out his embroidery journal and writes, uh, to embroider, it's not your fault. <laughs> uh, just tries to keep it away from every, anyone's you know, visual range. As he How far away the is the capital on, at the speed that the small ship we're going to be on can, can go? Sure. So as you, you so you kind of you go to the to the ship to find out. Uh, basically, it's built like a dragonfly. It connects to the bottom of the Hope and Grace, and uh, you got it's basically like a canoe with these wings coming off the side. If you go hard, as in like cramp yourselves into the ship and, and into that ship and go as hard as you can, it's going to take about a week and a half. Um, but you need to, but you will need to land to camp overnight. You can't stay in it overnight. That's awesome. Uh, now, regarding the mist, I mean, mm -hmm. is it a constant swirl, swirling that's below a certain height, or is it just kind of seeping into certain areas? Or like, a, on our way to the capital, would mm -hmm. it be a risk, or is it just so, that, is there something in the mist that we're worried about? So, there's never been any sign of anything up out of mist. It's basically considered completely dead below. Yeah. Uh, it's it, there's a bit of like a sea level where it's been steady ever since it stopped basically ever since it stopped rising a hundred years ago. But if there's a storm, it can start towering and get pushed up. Awesome. And the mist is toxic. Absolutely toxic. So every now and then somebody's like, oh, there'll be a uh, like competition. Somebody, you know, some teenagers will, will grab a ship and go down on a rope to sit and, you know, test how far they can go before, uh, before climbing back up. And there's absolutely been times when they've taken a breath of something and been poisoned. And if yeah. they don't get pulled up straight away, they can die. And are there lots of mountaintop islands between us and the capital? There's several villages <laughs> on the way that you guys can hop. It will take a bit longer, but it'll obviously be safer. You'll you'll be able to, uh, you know, resupply and and be able to stay in an inn rather than out in the wilderness. But if you want to, again, if you want to, if speed's a bigger concern, you can go in as, as the crow flies, but there is that risk of, of camping out. Yeah. I think we, we could probably do the camping thing. I mean, we're all brave adventurers. <laughs> Look at us. I mean, Mr. Whitmer, you wouldn't want to be all cuddled up in a nice double dunid. Yeah, bed. I think we should, uh, we should go from island to island. Yeah, I, you don't want to... <clears throat> Especially with the journey to uh to the bastion, there you don't want to you don't want to get there too quickly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if uh, Mister Whitber was more comfortable with it, I guess we could stay at the villages. It's but fine. just just think, Henry, the isolated mountaintops where we'd camp out might have forgotten ruins, or or they might have machinery that we could look at. They might they might have shields, lost, Whoa. forgotten shields, and yes. might have dangerous beasts, astrakhan. That's <laughs> they might I have, know, yeah, right? I mean, dangerous we beasts, cannibals. <laughs> we should definitely stop at the islands because the, they're going to the have the things more I could do with their bones. 
<laughs> um, yeah, Henry uh, was, you know, it's gone through a whole range of emotions at this, and then I, I don't, I don't want to be known as the trash can guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, can, too late. Come on, stop, like, guy. Like, let's let's stay at the at the caves with the beasts and the cold weather and the wet socks. Yes, Dan. beasts. So, Dan, can I, like I obviously as a pilot and like someone who's flown these skies for decades would um, have a knowledge, is there like a middle ground, like a, a bit of island hopping, maybe slightly more than a week and a half with a bit of a stop at a village, like like a slightly less unsafe route with a chance to stop and resupply? Can you, if you'd like, you can give me a survivor roll. So you're you rolling with advantage. With advantage, yeah. Yeah. To plot something out. Oh yeah, uh, my memory drew a blank. I'm still fogged from the dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the ice roll is in two. <laughs> it's not my fault. The <laughs> dice sucked. Uh, <laughs> I love how cursed my games have been lately. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you kind of, you're like, look, I know, you know where there's a large clearing uh, as if you're going as a crow flies, so you can ca- spend your first night camping out uh, mm-hmm. in the open and you're pretty, you're pretty sure that weather permitting, you can then hop to a village the next, for the next leg, mm-hmm. but, um, but it might depend on, on how the storms are. Mm. Okay, I relate this to my colleagues. I think that I'm treating Mr. Whitber as an unofficial leader. Um, that's just how I think about him. He's competent and not Henry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't mentioned trash can lids to you at all, but I certainly don't see you as leadership material. <laughs> it's all right, Henry. You can lead us against the like... beasts. Um, I mean. If if Mr. Whitman's the leader, it's only fair that I mean I don't want to take away <laughs> take away his, his pride and joy of being leader here. It's cool. So while they're teasing yeah, Henry, I'm just making sure. Yeah, <laughs> while they're teasing Henry, I'm making sure we've got supplies and camping materials as much as the canoe can hold. Yeah. Um, so you get so you get two weeks worth of food. So that should be more yeah. than enough uh, in one hit. For the four of you, should be. <laughs> yeah. uh, assuming uh, the weather holds and you don't get blown off course, yeah. You're also given camping equipment, so basically two two person tents and uh, and sleeping gear, etc. For that, uh, Henry, a good barrel as a good halfling has cooking gear, as they've got a racial ability that enables them to basically cook as a short rest. Um, so if you are able to take down any beasties, you can turn that into additional rations as well. Okay. Nice. What comes worse, we're going to need other halfling. Uh, very funny. <laughs> and the good news is that most of you are small creatures, so you actually you don't eat that much. <laughs> um, okay. We also don't free up that much space on the hope and grace. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a person and a half, but they're getting back basically. Yeah. Alistair McFlandry sitting there like, damn it! How did I see this? Should have chosen fatter passages to send off. Too high and mighty to realize the difference between different names. Now, is there anything else you guys wanted to do, or are you ready to take off now? Um, I think because he uh, Henry can't find his other sock, as he's about to step onto the dragonfly. He, with a single tear fall as he drops the sock onto the, uh, you know, the boarding platform. Like, You'll never find your brother. And turns away and just wipes the way it's here. Have a sky burial for it. Throw it in the mist, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sees it on the dragonfly as he steps in. Oh, come on! <laughs> like the other one. <laughs> nice. One place I didn't check. <laughs> uh, can we say that that Henry's managed to somehow fit in a couple of like embroidered cushions and things? <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. his, his embroidered sleeping bag. Yeah, no, this is, yeah. there's an embroidered sleeping bag. There's several embroidered cushions. And they all say stitch. things. They all say a crocheted lap blanket as well. <laughs> they all say uh, halfling equivalent to live, laugh, live, laugh, love, or whatever the saying is. Yeah, <laughs> live, laugh, nice. eat. Um, <laughs> all right 
Uh, I'm at home on a small boat. So like, Mm -hmm. did Captain Plumner come down to say goodbye or are we just going to get out of here? He he comes down. He um, kind of shakes each of you by the hand as you're loaded up and says, thank you. Heartened. (laughs) Oh, yep. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. I thank you so much, all of you, for taking on this mission. I uh, I hope um, that you each of you uh, find success. If you need any if you need any assistance, Mister Whitbar has his has the communication medallion. He can send for a message to us, and we'll provide what assistance we can. Uh, all I say to you as well is, don't engage. What if you find out whatever this creature is? If you confirm my fears that it is a dragon, do not engage. Come back to us. We will find a way to resolve the issue. I, I uh, but I just want to say, Captain, before we go, that uh, that I'm I'm really thankful that out of all the passengers, I was noticed as one of the select few that could do this mission, and I really Nearly appreciate being spotted. It's it's, it's an honor. Thank you. Nearly cast off. <laughs> 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 As I, I've, I've heard, I've heard your uh, your story that you've been looking for a way to prove yourself as a hero, and well, not many opportunities like this can come up. You've been reading my dream journal again. <laughs> I kept emailing it to you, so I hoped you did. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to add. So he doesn't answer that, and just kind of pats you on the shoulder and uh, gives the rest of you gives the rest of his crew a salute. Good speed, fellows, and uh, leaves you to, to take off as you will. Nice. Cool. All um, right. Does Neely, our dragon... would, you, would you like to make a, any kind of uh, fancy maneuver as you take off, or are you happy just to keep it safe? Yeah, I think that Neely's all practicality. There's no show off um, in her. I think that it's just, uh, yeah. Straight it's up and off. The most elegant of departures on the most efficient of of tangents. No worries. So you so the well the wings unfurl from the top and start and start uh, vibrating, moving up and down the, until they can get the give the ship enough lift. You um you, each of you inside your your seats kind of feel the vibration and then the vibration stops as you take off. Uh, a quick little turn towards the south. And uh, you guys head off. Does our dragonfly ship have a name or do we get to name it? You can, I'll let you guys name it if you wish. I haven't got one for you. I I literally just thought the dragonfly was its name. The (laughs) dragon, well, it can be called the dragonflyer if you want, if you want. Um, I was thinking shiny beetle. beetle? (laughs) Sure. It is called the shiny beetle. <laughs> okay. So it, it looks it looks kind of How like so I'll change the front. <laughs> I'll change the front from being that of a dragonfly to being more of a stag beetle. So it's got this like antenna coming up the front. Nice. <laughs> With these gorgeous elytra that kind of come up in like different shape. Oh, that sounds yeah. beautiful. Can it if be I get... slightly iridescent in the wings, like one <laughs> yeah, of those that's... Christmas beetles? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know that if I get bored at any point during this voyage, I'm going to just start modifying the ship <laughs> to make all of the beetle parts more more exciting. <laughs> they shoot lightning or something. Um, I wholeheartedly you, support that. If you get your hands into a forge, I will allow certain modifications. Sweet. Excellent. I imagine that uh, Henry's sitting there just, you know, rearranging his pillows so he can get comfy for the journey. And then yeah. under one of the pillows is the trash can lid. He's like, oh, ha, ha, very funny, guys. Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Neely feels at home on the open deck. This is a ship much more, it's closer to the size of one that she grew up with. And, like, I think that the vibrations of the deck through her boots, like she can read the air and, like, feel the currents and, um and I think immediately, like, she's making good time. Can I say that or do I have to roll for that? No, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so the only kind of potential hazard, and you're able to steer clear with your abilities, is you do spot that there's a storm brewing uh, off, yeah. off to the side. Uh, as you guys watch it, you, it almost is like a tornado of red uh, coming up in the storm front. You're out in the open air. It's no, it, it, it can't hide from you, and uh, and it's just kind of and it's moving away from you. But you do see this like 
the, this potential danger if it was on the other side of the ship, the, in the direction you're going. Uh, one of the other things, uh, nearly given your your history with with these birds, you do know that these storms usually have a rock or two at the front of them. They usually ride the uh, the thermals in front of these storms. But so, uh, what's the distance between us and the storm? Um, it's it's a safe distance, so unless you actively turn, it's gonna it's gonna pass you by. Yeah, there's a moment where I feel like a twitch in my upper arms and like there's a younger Neely inside me that wants to turn and pursue a rock, but I take a deep breath. I look at my companion, Mr. Whitber, looking very sensible, and I just keep going straight towards the capital. Understood. So after uh, after a while, you, it, it starts turning to dusk. You guys land in a suitable clearing and start putting up your tents. And this is the part where I ask the dreaded question, are you guys setting up a watch? Uh, yeah, I would insist on a watch, yeah. I think Henry's going to take the first watch because there might still be some light and he's that way you'll seem like he's the bravest. But really, <laughs> no, he's <I> like, <laughs> it's like, I, you know, I'm, like, I'm not scared. Henry, the, the, cause, cause you're not aware of these things. You know, the first time, obviously, out here adventuring. I always tell you that the first watch and the last watch are the most dangerous. If you want to be safe, you should take the middle one. I, I mean, I, I'm i pretty pretty brave, but, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to let you down by accidentally messing up, so I'll take I'll take that second watch. Um, I, I, I need time to wash the garbage smell out of my crochet cushions as well, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, Alistair, you got some soda water? <laughs> Walks back up the uh, ramp. <laughs> no worries. Um, and so who's taking the first? Neely is too excited to sleep. It's like there's like a singing inside her for like being on a small ship. Like this feels like freedom. So like, she just volunteers for the first watch. All right. And who's got the – so basically it's free, there's four of you. There only needs to be three watches. So who'd have the last one and who's going to sleep the night through? Uh, Mr. Whitmer will take the last one. Cool. So, Astrakhan, you sleep through, uh, unless you unless you desperately want to double up on someone. What's your golem doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's helping me wash my clothes. Um, Daniel, if you didn't know. All right. So, nearly you take the. So, you guys kind of prepare a meal. Henry, you you cook up uh, an appropriate meal. What's your first meal for the for the evening? Um, yeah, Henry will cook it up. Um, I think he's going to take only the finest beef jerky that we have mm -hmm. and then make it into some kind of, uh, I want to say it's like beef jerky on rice, but it's, uh, crumbed, mm -hmm. <laughs> crumbed beef jerky on rice. That's what we're going with, with a slight drizzling of teppanyaki sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's a halfling delicacy. Excellent. Um, How old is Henry? Is he a young halfling? <laughs> Yeah, he's, you know, early 30s. Yeah, I think uh, Neely's getting into a habit of getting a bit defensive of him when Astrakhan and Whitbar, Mr. Whitbar, tease him about trash can lids. And um, I wasn't teasing him. I was genuinely <laughs> trying to make him feel better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, then she's less also, defensive. <laughs> I just realised that I was on mute. So, uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> seemed a bit silent for a bit there. Yeah. So, um, um... In the meantime, I was offering my spider to take the watch because golems don't need to sleep. But you know, maybe a spider night could camping. watch Henry while he watches. Just in case, <laughs> Henry a hundred percent falls asleep during his watch <laughs> mid crochet. So... <laughs> it's so... not. Oh. <laughs> Do you have a name for your spider bot, Astrakhan, or is it just spider bot? Um, I call her sweetheart or darling, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure no one else calls her that. Right. So everyone else can just refer to her as spider if they want. She doesn't respond to anyone except me anyway. And so it's helping with the middle watch as well? Yeah. Or is it, yeah. All right. So nearly you, you kind of post up for your first watch. I'll get you to roll 2d6 to see if you notice any potential dangers. Oh. 
It's high. I rolled two sixes. Is that good or bad? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's a critical success. Um, so you kind of, you're on, on alert. You're a bit, you're a, a bit on edge. This is the first time in a while that you've been uh, out in the wild potentially. Um, yeah. First night away from the hope and grace for ages. But you don't notice anything untoward. Um, after a moment, you kick Henry awake for his turn. <laughs> And then when oh, he's not looking away, <laughs> I carefully get the little spider golem and, and <laughs> quietly remind it that it needs to watch Henry. Right. <laughs> so, Hopefully Henry won't see me do it. So Henry, if you're going to fall asleep, you can roll 1d6 for disadvantage as you're embroidering <laughs> and snoozing. Um, if my friends are within <laughs> vocal uh, range, although they're probably mm-hmm. asleep, so I wouldn't get it anyway. No. Um, but as you can, can roll 2d6 <laughs> with the golem. <laughs> Few. Three. I'm the golem is perceptive. Oh, yes. roll three. advantage yeah. even while even while asleep. <laughs> I um, rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> Seems accurate. <and laughs> Spider gets a six. Nice. Because this is when I rolled something was going to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> so, as, so what why happens? I said you should take the, the second watch, right? You know. I was very likely you had something to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so as you are, uh, so Henry, as you're kind of doing your embroidering and start snoozing, yeah, um, you don't realize the danger that's come overhead, and a creature known as a sky squid, effectively an, an octopus that can inflate itself to float uh, over over the mist until it finds <laughs> prey, uh, comes over you and drops down its tentacles around your neck. <laughs> it- no, I don't like that, Mum. <laughs> It starts. <laughs> it starts choking you. It hits, so you it, you take one uh, point of damage. But the yeah. but the fortunate part is that the spider bot sees this and starts like emitting uh, an alarm to wake everyone up. Me, 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 me. <laughs> uh, if I could get you all to roll initiative, so you roll two d six unless you've got the trait that says otherwise, and let me know your totals. Four from Henry. Eight, last you can. Six. Six. Uh, six. Okay, unfortunately for you all, it rolled a nine on its initiative, so it gets oh. go gobbling up lucky, lucky before he can react. Oh, stop it! Oh. <laughs> he starts trying uh, to stab his needle into it. <laughs> unfortunately, he, he rolled a six, so it, it manages to, to take an, a trump out of you as you're getting lifted up. Cool. But uh, you still have your gear on you. Nice. Uh, Mr. Nice. Whitbeard, I believe you were next. You had an eight? Yep. Um, oh, uh, no, sorry. I have a six. I got an eight. I... That seems appropriate, being that you had the uh, spider letting you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I am used to waking up to that meep meep sound. Um <laughs> Me, do me. I do I know <laughs> yeah. anything about sky squid? Uh, is there anything they're particularly weak against, like fire? Maybe. Uh, well, I mean, every, most things burn, but there's nothing kind of uh, potential. You're not sure about anything like specific. All right, I am going to try to toss, like, grab a handful of gravel and set it on fire with my magic and throw it at the the sky squid to try to get it to drop Henry. All right, roll 2d6 and see how you go. Six. Connects. So you 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 shoot this this these burning uh gravel towards it and um and it kind of re and um and rears back but it's still got uh Henry wrapped up in its in its uh tentacles. Did you mm. you got a second action? <laughs> Uh, I can throw one of my throwing knives at it. Go for it. Roll 3d6. All right. Oh, I actually got two sixes on those three. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so, so again, you kind of, you, you throw this burning thing and then follow burning gravel and then fo- follow up with a knife throw. And the knife throw sinks into one of its eyes. It's got about half a dozen eyes placed all around it. As it reaches down of its tentacles. Okay, accurate squid. Nice. Mr. Whitbear, you're up. Um 
I'm just gonna, you know, scramble awake, fucking cursing at the uh, <laughs> at the little robot for waking you up. Um, <laughs> the CC, uh, Harry, just like choking in the corner. See the squid. Then after that, um, is he's gonna scrabble for his for his um for his crossbow and he's gonna shoot the um try and shoot the squid. Go for it. Roll. Uh, you can attack twice. So roll twice with three d six each. Yep. So I got one, five, and six for my first roll, mm-hmm. and quickly reloads. And gets uh, five, six, and a three. Nice. So in the in the time that it will take an astrocan to throw one uh, knife, you manage to pull off two instead. Um, and again, from, from it kinds of you, you start hearing a, a whistling sound as as gas starts leaking out of this out of the sky squid, but uh, it is still dragging Henry up towards its mouth for a final chew. Uh, Kneeling, I believe you're next. Yeah, what do I know about <laughs> what do I know about sky squid? Like I'd I'd have encountered them before. Do they have weak spots? Like, so you, you can roll a, a, a I'll give you a three d six with your survivalist trait to as an action to kind of remember. Hmm. No, I might just attack it. How close is it? Oh, within range. Uh, you can like you can... of a ranged attack, or could I like hack at it with my machete? Yeah, so you can charge Billy, forward. He's going to get punched. And... Grab, grab Harry. Yeah, so I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to run forward and, like, with my... F- uh, like, I'm imagining it's close enough that I'll just kind of launch myself up and with my first... I think you've accidentally... Sorry, my cat right. sat on the... Uh, cat <laughs> sat on the mute button. I'm um, sorry. I'll launch myself <laughs> up and hack at the tentacles above Henry's head if I can reach them. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's not like floating up out of the ground yet, but he will see. Yeah, the yeah. So I'm grabbing, gonna hack at those. Yeah. So roll um, uh, one three d six for that. Yeah, I got a five. Nice. So you managed to sever the tentacle that was holding Henry good Henry up, and he collapses to the ground like. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> this isn't camping at all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I touched him his trash can lid. (laughs) 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 Um, And with my, yeah, and then I think I'll just kind of whirl around and with my machete just kind of strike across a few more tentacles, try and sever a few more. All right, yeah, roll again. Um, A six. Nice. So you managed to take out two more of the tentacles. It's This thing's definitely hurt, but, um, but it's still kicking. Uh, Henry, you, you're up now. Nice. Um, Henry will pull himself up from the ground, uh, you know, red mark neck and like, all right, my time to shine. I'm going to do it. I got this. And he'll, uh, you know, draw his sword and start swinging at it. Um, okay. Best he can. That's his master. That's his, uh, what's it called? Mastered weapon. So I get advantage on that. Yeah. That's right. Don't forget, you, though, you do need to spend one action to evade if you're wanting to defend yourself. If it attacks you, it goes for you again. All right, done. I'll do that. So I got a five, six, and a three. So six. Cool. Thing. So yeah. So you you lay into it. You manage to um to uh take off another one of the tentacles. It's still got five left, but uh, it's definitely badly hurt. It's um and then you kind of ready your shield up to defend yourself. I'll turn over to Neely, who just done cutting. Like, do you see that? I hit it. I, I'm doing it. <laughs> Doing the thing. Then he raises his shield to go, like, raises his trash can lid. <laughs> oh, the right. smile that nearly gives you is like the smile equivalent of a pat on the head. All right. It's nearly given that you've attacked it t- twice and you're a bigger meal, it's going to go for you twice. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, it it manages to connect once. Henry, are you going to try I and draw that attack yeah, yourself? Defender ability, yeah. So as it swings down, Henry's going to cartwheel in front and then block it with the shield as best you can. Yep, yeah, roll to evade. So that's 2d6 for you. Yeah, it is. Um, a five and a one. Nice. So you managed to avoid the tentacle, and that means you get to and swing opportunity back. Opportunity attack. Yeah. Look at me go. <laughs> uh, two, five, three. So five is my best there. So your your cartwheel comes through it at, at, at the last minute. You also you manage to um, get yourself a little boost as well, yeah. And uh, you manage to sink your uh, your little short sword 
deep inside its mouth. It deflates <laughs> and comes down near you. Kia! <sighs> and uh, yeah, he looks like all like, around you. Look at this. I hadn't thought of that, but yes. <laughs> Falls down, <laughs> yeah. packs it, and then just the mouth just kind of falls down around him. He's like, ah! <laughs> and loses that moment of cool as he's freaking out and then just standing inside this, you know, just there's the thing wrapped around him. He's kind of pushing through the uh, inside of this octopus. Uh, after a moment, I'm sure you're able to cut yourself. Yeah, free, cut yourself yes. out. Like, oh no, I thought he died. What a shame. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I did that. And this is definitely blood in my crutch area, not urine. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, if you excuse me, I've got some pants to embroider. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> he uh, kind of waddles himself up onto the ship. <laughs> Do sky squid have any useful parts like ink or, you know, at least maybe a bit of food to replace what we've eaten tonight, but are there any other bits or pieces I could scavenge from the squid's body? So the, um, from your history, yes, they said so you do, you managed to get some ink that yeah. Astrakhan might be able to use in some way. Yeah. Uh, you managed to Excellent. collect, you managed to collect some calamari from the tentacles. Yum. So you don't consume your rations for the evening. You basically, you managed to store those up and uh, turn calamari them into for bread. breakfast, Henry. Yep. Yeah, I can do that. Um, Astrakhan, you got any more soda water that's good for, uh, urinary blood, blood. Yeah, yeah, blood stains. Um, yeah. I, I can, I can get sweetheart to bubble some water for you. Sure. Thanks, please. Uh, sooner than later. Um, if everyone could just wait outside till I'm done embroidering, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, I, I, I gotta take and Delia. Some soda water. <laughs> But it's like you said, you're having like a soda stream built into its body now. <laughs> it didn't originally, and then I met Henry, and it just became a necessity after a while. I just imagine that, uh, you know, it's Henry and the spider in the in the shiny beetle together, and he's like, it, he puts and his I, hand on the spider, it's just like, all right, this is just between you and me, okay? But, <laughs> but the unfortunate part is that it would look like it is urinating on you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't, you're, you're I can't on visualize me. that part of it. <laughs> I think he's just sitting there. He's just like as the spider's urinating on his you know, <laughs> pants, and he's he's just standing there. He's tidy whities and he's just uh, dabbing away. The trick is to dab it. That way, you don't ruin the embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I'm going to assume that you've got uh, Astra Candles has access to bicarbonate soda as well. Yeah, I'm also going to assume that. <laughs> it's not the first time. <laughs> what What Henry probably doesn't realise is that my spider can replay anything it sees for me <laughs> within the last three hours. <laughs> That's really creepy. <laughs> really hot. <laughs> there are things that, there, that I don't realize the rules ha let happen that are now happening. It's not uh, that I necessarily do get it to replay it. It's just that I could. <laughs> you just watch this scene like later on, you're just watching a like, little palm pilot and it's got this Henry's face right up to the spider. It's like, it's just between us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could I could picture that being like from a TV show, like you going through that whole scene and yeah. then it just coming coming out to see Astrakhan actually just watching that entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's happened. <laughs> it's canon now. Come on. What you watch? <laughs> As they're dealing with that, I'm just going to take Neely aside as as she's butchering the squid. I'm going to like um, get down um, with them and um, you know, start taking off the the squid's beak and be like, yeah. "You reckon we could? When we get to one of the towns up ahead, we could actually take the beak and get it turned into a real shield for for Harry. You know, as a bit of a memento for his first his first kill. Yeah, he did pretty well there. Oh, I like, I I am always surprised when Mr. Whitber shows this soft and fluffy side of himself. And I like to just kind of give him a bit of a look and like, yeah, 
yeah, we could do that for the little guy. Um, and so, yeah, I pass him the beak. Keep it hidden. Yeah. Let's make okay. it a surprise. No worries. So you guys, um, yeah, you, you grab the beak out. It, look, it Basically, it would have been left to waste otherwise, but it is a, quite a solid piece of material, so it would be able to make a decent halfling-sized shield. It's also lightweight because mm-hmm. it's a sky squid. I'm going I'm to yeah. bundle up the, the beak and then, you know, when I go out of the cabin, I'm stashed away and then I snap at Harry, stay away from my shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Um, that's all right. I mean, did, did you manage to get the bit that makes it invisible? I mean, there's got to be some kind of invisibility camouflage this thing has because I didn't see it at all. <laughs> it comes from above. Yeah, I guess it might be pretty sneaky. <laughs> you go back to the video and it's just, it's literally there, just sitting a foot from Henry's face, looking at him, taps him on the shoulder. He's like, no, stop it. <laughs> just keep sleeping. Um, oh, they're not so hard. So Neely actually fights hard to be in the same tent as Henry because it's the tent with the most cushions and <laughs> and crochet <laughs> blankets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. crazy <laughs> tent. Yeah. He's giving you tips of as the best way to you know make use of three separate dunas. The trick is you put one as a base and you fold it over. The other two wrap around you like a cocoon. Look like this. <laughs> oh, well, a halfling knows how to make a tent comfy. <laughs> This you can true. just throw those other 14 cushions to the side. They're, not, <laughs> they're just for decoration. Throw pillows. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. So I didn't realize Lucky had met my out. wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, the night, you guys return to sleep and the night continues unabated. Nice. Uh, Mr. Whitbear is just staying up since that event, you know, um, yeah. and continuing out on the watch. No worries. Um, the next day... I have the tent all to myself. <laughs> well, you and your, uh, and your spider bot and sweetheart. Of course. Watching your home movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I only get to enjoy three more hours of this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Astrakhan, is, um, if there's held movies, I have to ask, is there that like super traditional, like lost love looking at the camera? Oh, stop it. Put it away. Video <laughs> that you have saved somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That will come up. <laughs> is it really just you and the bot? There's no one else. You're saying that just to the bot. <laughs> no one knows oh. except me and the bot. No, I, I've I've named my spider bot after my long lost love, who I also called sweetheart, and who also had a name that no one else was prepared to use. Oh. Mostly because they couldn't pronounce it. Gnomish is quite difficult for most other peoples. True. Mm. So you guys wake up the next morning. You don't have the dream again. It's not a recurring dream. But um, you wake up kind of bedraggled a little bit, didn't get the full night's sleep that you're hoping for, but you're well, you're rested enough. I you think climb on <laughs> um, Neely, did you want to see how you want to go, if you want to go to a village or if you want to strike out for the wilderness again? Um, I think, and I'll I perhaps I'll consult with Mr. Whitper and Astrakhan. Uh, mm-hmm. and and henry oh. <laughs> and that um, guy <laughs> and i'm um, here too and then we'll uh you know ma- you know the choice is it about speed or is it about safety yeah no i, I wouldn't want to get to the bastion too quickly honestly you know yeah you know how it is around around here this, t- this time of year you know you get get mist storms come out of nowhere um best just take it safe and uh you know, take your time getting there. Uh, it's, it's no rush. Yeah. Oh, you know, we, we, we can't report on this uh, this dragon if we're dead, right? Yeah, I've learned the hard way not to take too many risks. Uh, Astrakhan, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I am getting a bit low on bicarbonate of soda, so 
if there are any villages nearby that are on mountains where there's quite a, a soda deposit, we could always pick some of that up, see if there are any messages to take. We don't really have cargo space, but um, it wouldn't hurt us oh. to sleep in an inn for a night. We can go back to camping tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, there probably would be fewer cushions in the inn, but... um. It's yeah. all right, I can carry them. I'm pretty good at transporting the cushions. <laughs> um, when Astrakhan had the idea about messages, Neely was sold because uh, there's the opportunity to earn more coin. Okay. Um, and then do I need to, like, make a check down to see if I can remember a village nearby or on the way -ish? But There is a, a village. It's directly west of you guys. It's called Delonde. You can – It normally it would be, like, a day and a half. Mm -hmm. But you're quietly confident that uh, you can clip off that half day yep. and get there before nightfall. Yep. If you want to, uh, but the 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 trick of it is though that if you uh, fail this roll, you're going to be uh, effectively exhausted because you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to put down anywhere between here and there. Um, okay, I'll just again like lay that out to Astrakhan and Mr. Whisper, whis Mr. Whitper, <laughs> to make sure that they're kind of happy with that risk. Uh, uh, we we trust you, Neely. You think you can make it? You do yeah, think you can it. make it? I know I can make it. Well, that, well, that's all that matters. Then. As my brother always used to say, if you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. Oh, when Henry no speaks, chance. nearly sort of jumps like she forgot he was ah! there. <laughs> um, she's, yeah, good. Good thinking, Henry. Um, okay, I'll make a roll then to see if I can do it. With advantage, is that right, Dan? With, with advantage because you yeah. your fleet-footed foot. trait extends to vehicles because otherwise it's a bit useless. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I got a five. Nice. Five, four, and one. So you managed to um, basically you're, you're following uh, initially following the, um, the the island that you're on uh, and keeping close to the land before striking out for the mist. You managed to ride some wind currents that give you the extra push uh, before you're heading out into the mist to get you to an extra speed. Um, it's a clear day that there's no sign of yesterday's storm, and you managed to kind of. Uh, do like this kind of gliding motion where you'll fl keep the engines going and then glide for a bit, riding the thermals and, uh, and manage to conserve both conserve energy, but while making excellent speed and you reach the long day just before nightfall the following day. Nice. Now the long day is known as the city of labyrinths. There's a, a cave network directly underneath this town that some say lead down to planet side, but anybody, anybody, anyone who's ever tried uh, ends up falling sick and needing to pull back. It's a medium sized town. It's a bit, a bit bigger than Thundercleft where you guys started from, but a big range of, of humans, of dwarves, of halflings, a bit of everyone around here. Where do you guys want to go? If anywhere. Can I just ask, an airship is a relatively valuable commodity. Do we, is there like other secure places to leave, mm -hmm. to leave, what is it called? Shiny beetle? <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. So because if people were robbing these airships and they lost that air traffic, they would, they would die out. None of these cities are capable of self-sustaining yeah. uh, themselves. So this area is known as being almost like, not quite the gateway to the capital, but it's one of the main kind of stops before reaching it. Um, so it's it's it gets a lot of traffic coming through. So there's this almost like a port authority where you guys report in, you land the ship, you you declare yourselves as the, as the owner uh, and the pilot, and uh, and you're given a um, basically a lock that enables it to lock down, and uh, and you've it's got its own locking mechanism as well. Okay, great. Um, um, I think uh, Henry in celebration is going to go out and try and find a collection of ingredients to better suit calamari. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he'll go ahead and do that. He'll awesome. No, I'm going to, small confession, I'm allergic to shellfish, so I've got no idea what that could include. So <laughs> I'll get you to roll 2d6 to see what you find. Uh, tartar sauce, at least. <laughs> Lemon pepper. Come on. Tomatoes. 
Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. A three and a four. All right. So you managed to find some lemon, um, but pepper seems to be off the off the menu today. So you managed to kind of get part of the way there. Yep. Um, yeah. So he he'll find that and then uh, he'll settle with uh, something that he thinks looks like a tartar sauce, but mm-hmm. it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> All I had to do was suck it out of a tube. So you get presented with this mustardy ball. It's like in a in a in a in a sphere shape, and you kind of you almost like rub it against the thing. It, it they declare it some form of fish sauce, but and it smells <laughs> like it could be, but uh, it's not. <laughs> smells fishy. It's not in a normal <laughs> shape. <laughs> Hi, perfect. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Shakes hands like, oh, why are your hands? Cl-? Never mind. And then uh, grabs the collection of uh, mm-hmm. liquid and then continues on. No worries. Um, actually, so you guys uh, find the inn. It's called the Wandering Panther. It's a uh, two-story building, and you have access. If you ask, you have access to the kitchen to prepare this meal. Can um, we see if we can trade a night's lodging for like? delivery of messages to the capital or something similar so we don't we're not yeah, out so of like a, a post office here that we should yeah we should um, yeah so there's there is a, a post office for people basically because you guys are independent contractors normally it's done through uh, oracle ships such as the hope and grace but do you guys announce yourselves as, as being crew of the the hope and grace or do you want to try and convince them that you guys are trustworthy and you'll you'll totally get this paperwork I, I think it's best to say that we're from the um, from the ship I, well i mean was part of our agreement with the captain to not do that no at, he at didn't the, say at that. the capital no oh, at the capital okay cool mm. um yeah well i mean this this is almost henry's area of specialty because his family were all burgomeisters so they're used to all the you know uh paperwork and the way to grease and talk to these people in order to get you know the bureaucraticness across um could I swing you for an advantage on doing something there? Yeah, certainly. So you're trying to convince them that <laughs> you're legit, that you're. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say we're. Yeah, I'll. I'll. You know, call it break hard. Look, I, this is the paperwork I need to sign. I need a B14C, and if you could, you know, see if you've got any of the 1219A forms. Um, I want to, you know, submit those in a joint thing to say that you know what we need to do, and uh, he spiels it better than I do. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I fill in all the appropriate paperwork in order to requisition some stuff. Go for it. Roll. Uh, I'll let you roll 3d6, given your your family history and knowledge. And I rolled a three and two twos. So <laughs> um, wasted. <laughs> Dimitri, so at, so at this point, you can pull out your letter of association with the Hope and Grace. <laughs> After they shut him down, yeah. like get yeah. the fuck out of here. Kid. <laughs> Pretty no, much. no, we're really, we're really crew. Yeah. So initially, you try and avoid bringing up the the hope and grace, but then it's like, look, they're, they're just not buying your story. Uh, you know, they've never met you guys before. They've got no idea who you are. You provide the paperwork signed by the captain that you are members of the hope and grace and acting on his behalf. Uh, in which case, they then provide with you with about half a dozen letters in a in a lockbox, and. Um, and uh, they provide, they pay you uh, two gold apiece for each one. So that's a total of 24. Oh, nice. It's not bad. Nice. And that's, and that's all to head towards the capital, towards, uh, yeah, towards the bastion. All right. Now, and while we're at the paperwork office, could mm-hmm. I like just discreetly make some inquiries to see if anyone in the town goes by the name of Druitt? Sure. Um, do I need to roll for that, or can I just? Yeah, roll two d six. Ah, uh, yeah, a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> um, they kind of look at you and says, "Well, I, I mean, aside from yourself, we're not too." <laughs> We're not too familiar with anybody by that name, by that name, but you know we get we get a few people coming through here all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay, you promised us some calamari, Henry. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, look, I got this this sauce that I found at one of the local side stands. I mean, he uh, didn't yeah. exactly have a stall, but 
he was definitely on the side of the road. And come on, let's go. I'll, I'll cook it up. And he, he quickly yeah, I'm allergic. Would you mind putting it on the side? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. He, I can do that. I mean, I got it special and everything, but that's it's fine. Um, <laughs> I just imagine that as he runs, he's these shoes have like squeaky things in them. Just <laughs> 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 as he quickly skippers down the road. <laughs> That's that's why he took so long to wake up at the meep meep from the spider. It just sounded like someone walking. Oh. <laughs> I like so, the idea that he doesn't hear it and everyone else does. <laughs> and uh, and Mr. Whitbear, did you want to try and find somebody to make that shield? Yeah, um, I'll just go see see what we can do here. But you know, not not holding high hopes because you know it's something that we can. Play it long and, and, and do it in the other place as well. So yeah, I'll uh, get you to roll me three d six for this one because you're basically just asking about a, a fairly required business. Yep, uh, six six two. Nice. So you you, you uh, while they while they're uh, at the post office, you ask about a local blacksmith, and uh, yeah, they confirm this one just down the road. He's open for the next couple of hours. And uh, as you slip away and, and show them what you've got, they confirm that they can add a handle and um, and be able to uh, turn into a, in a proper defensive manner. Uh, Henry, when you get this shield, oh, actually, I'll let you guys present the shield, and I'll explain how that will work. Uh, um, well, we'll get it made, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna present it until it gets back to the ship. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Henry's gone to the kitchen and at the place, and uh, he's talking to the chef who usually works in the kitchen about how easy, you know, how how well this sauce is gonna pair with the calamari that they have. <laughs> he's like, uh huh. <laughs> I tell you that, that that your town is absolutely lovely, and the people are so coming. You didn't even charge me for this stuff. Can you believe that? <laughs> you took some posts from them as part of payment. What's that? You took some. You took a letter for them. Like they said, oh, you're heading to the capital. Take, can you deliver this for me? No, this is for the tartar sauce. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't have to pay them for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you did not. <laughs> it's just red flags everywhere with this stuff. Like... <laughs> it'll it'll be delicious. Yeah. Um, Henry puts all the love he possibly can into making this meal for everyone. Um, so, uh, Aww. I get to make a test and see how well I cook it. Let's see what happens. Well, oh, well, uh, yeah, give me 2d6. A five, three and a five. Um, so, uh, what you, what the, everyone else realizes the tartar sauce is that you don't is that it's some kind of solidified mayonnaise ball. Um, so, you, but you manage to uh, to divide it up evenly enough across the calamari that it doesn't overpower uh, the taste, of, the saltiness of the calamari. You it managed to find a decent IPA that pairs very well with it. That's included as part of your lodgings. Oh shit! And, um, and whoever eats it gets back six hit points, which I think I'm the only one who's down. Well, you you would have recovered fully at the end of your sleep. Well, anyway. either I was way, down one as well. So <laughs> enjoy the uh the hit points that don't do anything for you. <laughs> you feel good. Yeah. See, delicious. <laughs> Henry and then, uh, feels super prideful more than ever before. <laughs> uh, in the background as well, of the end, there's a a bard. <laughs> Uh, singing songs. Um, one seems to be a bit sad. It's it's a bit of a, a fairy tale uh, in the background about um, meeting Fay and uh, and how they're not to be trusted as the as they steal away the singer's love. Um, there's a small crowd kind of drunkenly singing along. Apparently, this is the only song that this particular bard knows because everyone seems to know it. <laughs> It reminds me of that uh, the Ding Dong song in that what's that one with Will Ferrell? He plays the uh, they're trying to get onto Eurovision. You seen that film? No. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the entire town and they like one song that they play. It's the <laughs> Ding Dong song. Yeah. Um, and as you guys go to sleep, several things happen around the world. <gasps> one, there is a dragon somewhere dreaming of eating and war. 
Elsewhere, the mist moves a little bit more forcefully. It starts gathering, it seems like it's gathering speed. It always seems to have a little movement, but it seems to be almost flowing at one point. And finally, you have your captain hoping that he's made the right decision and sending you four out uh, to do to do what he can't at the moment. And we will leave it there. Ah, I love good. Captain Plumner. He's like a Star Trek captain. <laughs> 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 um, awesome. Well, thank you very yeah. much. What a way to enter the world, don't you? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. That was great. <laughs>